Hey guys, today we get to talk about nine cards. Before I begin, I want to say Wizard of the Coast has done a great job showing interest to the modern legacy formats and also our devastation, while in my opinion not overtly powerful, has done a good job bringing balance to standard, including new decks. This is one of the new decks. Now, it's still about $2. If it actually sees any Pro Tour play, or assuming that it has visibility, all it has to do is have game one, right? It has to be on camera. It will shoot to the moon. It was the definition of bulk around hmm, 50 cents, maybe a little less, and now it is $2. But should this be a viable card? It costs seven. Seven is a lot. That's not a small amount, but continuous effects and creatures to boost with haste, very good. Remember, it also doesn't remove it at end of turn, which is, I kind of read it as remove at the end of turn, but actually the creature stays around if it survives. Now, Champion of Wits is the card that has spiked from bulk to $7. It is the best speculation you could have made it doesn't seem powerful on its face but it does a lot of good stuff it draws you two and then you get the discard two this card actually being not a bad mechanic i mean you get to choose what you want to discard and sometimes you need to put stuff in the grave but on the flip side it's a good blocker it's going to buy you some time if you're blue and then it goes to the graveyard the externalize for five in double blue seems like a lot but you already got so much value you got a two one creature and got to draw two and discard two so you had to you got to filter uh if and then at that stage assuming you curve into it at turn three you can find more land or maybe you have too much land and you need some action so it's a great card even without the last ability but the last ability kind of puts it over the edge because you're drawing for it's dig through time, right? A less powerful version of it, but more upside in the beginning. All right. This card has gone up. There was a time that it was around, looks like around $20. And that was after Amulet Bloom got banned. This was one of the better cards in Amulet Bloom. Amulet Bloom, remember, was the deck that all these people were cheating with to win. Who was his name? Jared something? And he would like draw the Exodia Yu-Gi-Oh reference hand where you couldn't beat him. <laughs> he would just be like, all right, I got the nuts, you lose. And it turned out he was cheating, right? The old cards and lap trick. <laughs> I remember in elementary school when someone did that. And I was like, man, how would you not get caught? But this guy like won like every tournament with Amulet Bloom. By like setting his hand, like he would put seven cards in his lap, and then <laughs> it's just ridiculous that he can get away with it. I mean, he did get away with, with it. Anyway, this is a beautiful card. I think it's fascinating in EDH. It's not something that will go down in price ever, barring like a tremendous reprint. It's something quite unique in its ability and wanted in EDH. All right, Dragon Tempest. Good card, has been seeing a lot more play now. I think it's interesting because it's never going to get weaker. It's like Snapcaster Maze. Yeah, I'm not saying it's as good as it, of course, but overall it cannot get weaker. So it never gets, I mean, it's always a good card and it's never going to get worse because there will only be more dragons. The more dragons they are, just like Snap, with the more sorceries and instants, the better the card will be. $2 is a very low buy in point. I could see another future dragon set. Like, I mean, dragons are very popular. They've always been incredibly popular in Magic. We do know a five color ED8 dragon deck is coming into play soon. And I like it. I mean, I think it's really, really good in a dragon deck. And I predict that we will have more dragons in the future in every single set from here on out. Good card. Is it modern playable? Probably not. 
but EDH is going to be very good. Now let's talk about a reserve list card from the dark. Mana Vortex is a $5 card. This card is it's unique, right? So each player uh, sacrifices land pretty much each turn on his or her upkeep. When you play it, you sack a land, so you begin sacking land first. And then if you cannot sacrifice a land, um, when this cast, you sacrifice the card. It's kind of weird text, but anytime there are no land in play, it destroys itself. But if you are a land deck, then you always have land in play. And assuming that you have Crucible or the new Excavator, you're fine. You can just play land from your graveyard but your opponents are not fine. And I think that's what the big difference is. It's always been very good with Crucible, but now we have two cards. The new Snake card from Hour of Devastation, which is Crucible of a Body. So I like it. It is good. I have to dig these out. I'm positive I have a bunch of them. I mean, I have a ton of Dark. I, don't ask me why I have a ton of these cards, but I, I do. Wow, just when the uh, card, <laughs> this is an insane price that needs a reprint like yesterday. Horizon Canopy from Future Sight. The reason that it is so expensive, it is a unique card. I would love to see the entire set. If Ixline had this card, I wouldn't need to see any other cards in the set. I would call it an MTG Finance successful. And then you had the other either the enemies with the allies or just the allies. This is a very unique card. It has a very unique place in modern. It's a great, great card. Uh, pay one life, you can get a green or a white. So it's kind of like brush land. But instead of having the now considered upside, right, of colorless mana, you can pay one and you can sacrifice it to draw a card, which is amazing, right? It's amazing in pretty much EDHs and modern, because sometimes you don't need land, you just need a card, and to essentially sacrifice some tempo to get the card that you need, well, very, very good card. All right, I haven't looked at this in a while. I expected this to go down in price, but the deck is for real. Uh, the Snake, the Hazret, I don't we want to butcher his or her name. The Snake one is a very powerful deck. I haven't built it yet. I'm trying to consolidate my ED8 deck, but I have all the pieces to build the commander. I have all the pieces because I play during the set. Where if the minus one, minus one counters or the other cards are relatively new and therefore inexpensive to buy at this particular time. It's a good deck. I have played against it. My gut feeling is it is a very strong deck and it's fun. It's a fun deck with unique interactions using cards that you typically don't see. Uh, it does have a high win percentage among my play group. One of my friends, Chris, he plays it. He will swear by it because that's the, he's kind of like, he has about 20 EDH decks, but this one he said is by far his favorite. And that makes a lot of sense why the card is spiking so hard because people just like playing it. And I'm a little curious to play it as well. All right, Seaborn Muse, 22 bucks. Is this card going to be reprinted hopefully soon? I hope so. Uh, why is it so expensive now? As you can see, the giant spike from $10 till looks like almost $30 and then back down to 20. Well, you know, they banned Profit of Krufik, so I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes speculations don't turn out well. Profit of Crufix was a speculation that I made because I was like, wow, Seaborn Muse is $10. Profit of Crufix is like $2. Yeah, let's buy as many of these as we can get your hands, my hands on. And uh, that didn't turn out well because they banned it in EDH. But at the same time, that's risky. I like powerful cards. If you watch this channel at all, you know I will always want a card that gets banned. I always like the Feldon Guardians and Sahili. I like the Emicles. I like the Smuggler Copters. I like cards that are pushed. Because in Magic, in original Magic, um, Sarah Angel was pushed. 
I mean, creatures were not very good back in the day, but I remember like having that card and saying, yeah, if I can get, just get this one card on the playing field, I can dominate the game. And that's why I feel like with a lot of these, like Prophet of Kufix, Mugglecopter, I just feel good about it. All right, next, a movement on Deathrite Shaman. Yes, that is right. You heard me, a movement on this Left for Dead card. And the movement is thank you to Legacy because it is still banned in Modern. Remember like when it was unbanned in Modern? This was the best card in Modern at one time. It did everything you needed to do. It did damage, it gained you life if you needed to, removed cards from the graveyard, which was really important, and then produced you mana to boot. Plus, it was a green or a black, and as a 1-2 blocker, it wasn't, I mean, it's got good power and toughness for a 1-drop. I don't know. It might be a good speculation, because at $4, right, let's assume you can buy it for $3 or $3.25 on eBay. Legacy plays this card. This card is still very, very good in Legacy. Now, if it ever were to be unbanned in Modern, you can see it was hitting a $15 mark, right? That was when supply was much, or that's when supply was more recent. Yes, it got a reprint, but it's, it's so powerful. Like it is so powerful as a card. Your opponent cracks a fetch land, you eat their fetch land, right? So you're doing graveyard removal and you also get a uh, mana acceleration so and then you can do damage you can do the last points of damage to your opponent you can gain some life if you need to you can remove essential cards like lingering souls and things of that nature from graveyards you can remove essential creatures from graveyards not making tamagoyf as big i love the card i've always loved defrai shaman uh, it's unfortunate that he was banned but i understand why and if i had to no spec on a card i would much rather spec on a powerful card that eventually gets banned than spec on a weak card if you spec on a weak card no matter how much the meta changes it will never be good enough but death right shaman assuming he's unbanned his price is going to be ten dollars no no problem uh, even with the reprint for modern of course that being said, he does have a fallback, which has always been Legacy. He, he is such a good card. And to see him at $4 is still kind of a little jarring because I remember him at the 15. I remember buying him at like 7 and then he went to 15. And I was like, yeah, cool. He'll go to 25 soon enough. And then they banned him, right? And then they reprinted him. I don't know. I, I do love the card. I am going to give you some honest feedback. I am personally buying these. Uh, at three dollars uh, or three dollars and fifty cents and i'm not unhappy with uh getting more copies of them anyway that is it bye guys